part of a small island off the west coast of Europe. Yet English is the spoken language or else an official language in all these parts of the world. It is in fact a world language. Where did it start? Somewhere between South Russia near the Black Sea and the Baltic several thousand years ago. This was the home of a group of languages we now call Indo-European. From here they have spread all over Europe and into Asia, the Americas, Africa and Australasia. Here in Northern Europe, one of these Indo-European languages about 2,000 years ago divided into three main groups of dialects. The Eastern group, marked roughly here, has quite died out. The Northern group spread across Scandinavia and much later into Iceland. The Western group began to spread over these parts of Europe. Now Britain about 1600 years ago was still part of the Roman Empire. It was inhabited by Celts who spoke Celtic and by Romanized Celts who spoke a form of Latin. But the Romans had to go, leaving the land to the Celts. A few years later, Germanic tribes from northwest Germany invaded the island. The Celts retreated to the west where the Celtic language survived. The invaders quickly settled down in a fertile land and became the English. They spoke four English dialects. Of these four English dialects, the central one, Mercian, is the basis of modern English. This early English, brought from northwest Germany, was already a satisfactory language with first-rate poetry. From it come all our most essential and most familiar words, such as man, woman, bairn, eat, drink, sleep. Already in the fifth century, English was a flexible language, quite ready to enrich its stock of words with new acquisitions. From the original Celtic language, the English began borrowing any words they wanted, notably river names, Thames and Severn, or the names of towns, such as Dover, London, Lincoln, Leeds. From the Romanized Celts, the English borrowed Latin words, many being names of plants and agricultural implements. Typical Latin words adopted at this period into English are cock, pear, cup, Pale, anchor. About a hundred years later, missionaries came from Rome to convert England to Christianity. From them, the English took many more Latin words, especially terms of religion, such as Minster, Arms, Altar. During the 9th century, the Vikings from Scandinavia attacked many parts of southern Europe. Many of these Scandinavians settled in Britain. From them, the English gathered several thousand everyday words. The English language already had such words as sail and ship. But the many nautical words they took from the Scandinavians include haven. Other common Scandinavian words acquired at this time are knife. take. Another very common word taken at this period is root. The Scandinavians who had settled in France were called the Normans. Before long they gave up their own language and spoke French. In 1066 the Duke of Normandy made himself King of England and many of his followers came over with him, settling among the English. From them, the English took many hundreds of new words. Some of them dealt with buildings, such as castle, tower,
moat. Court, in the sense of courtyard. Chimney. Other French words taken into the language at this time dealt with cooking. So we get fry, boil. And we also get names of food, such as beef, mutton, and sausage. French words were also borrowed through the Normans to describe new legal ideas. Court, meaning law court. Judge. Advocate. During the Middle Ages, the English took more than 10,000 words from the French. The King's Courts of Law began to sit in London. So London became the legal centre of England in the Middle Ages. It was also the centre of trade. So naturally the form of language that was spoken in London became standard English. Now the English were always great travellers and traders. And they traded all round the North Sea. From the Dutch they gathered many new and useful words to do with shipping. Boy is one of the Dutch words taken into English in the Middle Ages. Other words of Dutch origin are Skipper, deck, dock. Up to the 15th century, only this part of the world, marked in black, was known. But in the next 150 years, the new world was discovered. Now the English embraced a new world with their trade routes and enlarged their language with new words. Some words they got from Spain. A word of Spanish origin is galleon. Another is comrade. Yet another is armada. From the Portuguese, the English borrowed only a small number of words. The best known is port wine. From South and Central America came Native American words, imported into English through Portugal and Spain, such as tobacco, potato, maize, English also enriched itself with words from Europe. From Germany were borrowed terms associated with metals and mining. One well-known word is quartz. The German language also provided words associated with war, such as plunder. Between 1450 and 1600, Italy was the home of the Renaissance. From the Italian language, English was greatly enriched by cultural terms of architecture, music, literature and art. From Italy come cameo, miniature, balcony, umbrella, So by 1600, when Shakespeare was writing, English had become a rich and powerful medium of expression with large numbers of words taken from many languages. Shakespeare, in his works, used some 20,000 words. Here is a passage of 11 lines containing only 59 different words, yet 22 come from abroad. This royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war, this happy breed of men, this little world, 
this precious stone set in the silver sea, which serves it in the office of a wall, or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England. In 1600, in the next century and a half, the English built up a great colonial empire where their language came to be spoken. In 1776, the 13 English colonies on the coast of North America became independent as the United States of America. English is the language of the United States, and with the growth of the American people, has spread across North America. By this time, the English were in partnership with the Scots, Welsh, and Irish. Together, as the United Kingdom, they built the present British Commonwealth, where English is either the spoken or the official language. As British trade with the world has increased by leaps and bounds, so every year English has enriched itself with more words from other languages. From India, the British have adopted cockatoo, and chintz. From China comes tea. From Arabia, sash. and sofa. From Turkey, coffee. From Persia, divan and shawl. From West Africa, chimpanzee, zebra. From Australia, kangaroo, and budgerigar. To mention only a few examples. The modern world is full of new inventions, and to describe these new inventions, English has made use of both Latin and Greek. From Latin comes omnibus. From Greek, cinema, photograph, and many other recently coined words such as thermometer, and telegraphy. When Mr. Churchill broadcasts in English, he is understood by the greater part of the world. The peoples of the British Empire may love peace. They do not seek the lands or wealth of any country. But they are a tough and hardy lot. We have not journeyed all this way across the centuries, across the oceans, across the mountains, across the prairies, because we are made of sugar candy. The English that Churchill speaks is based on an old Indo-European dialect. It is a vigorous, rich and flexible language, quick to make use of new words from other languages. The English language has borrowed thousands of its half million words from all over the world and it is understood in almost every part of it.